Assalamu alaikum. Uh, I hope everyone is fine. Uh, today, my guest is Dr. Shabir Ahmad Parra. Shabir Ahmad Parra is currently assistant professor, senior assistant professor at the Department of Electronics, University of Kashmir. Uh, we are glad uh, that um, Sar has joined us. Uh, basically, uh, you must be aware of the fact that uh, university, Stanford University every year issues a list of top researchers in the entire world. And we are glad and happy that and there are very few people in this part of the world which, ha which have made it to the list. And Shabir Saab is constantly making it into the list, I believe, in the second time. So uh, I would directly request Shabir Saab uh, for the sake of our audience and our audience are mostly students. Uh, please introduce you. Tell us about yourself. Shabir uh, Dr. Sal, thank you very much uh, for giving me this opportunity to talk to you. Uh, I'm Shabir Parra. I was born in a very beautiful village of District Gandharbal, Zazna. Uh, I had my primary education at government primary school, Zazna. My secondary education at boys high school, Batavina. Then had my plus two from higher secondary school, Fumbal. Then I entered government degree college, Bimna, for my BSc with non-medical subjects, with electronics, which was, of course, my passion uh, as one of the subjects. Completed my graduation from there, then uh, had my PG from the Department of Electronics, University of Kashmir. In the process, once I completed my PG from the department, it was about, yeah, it was 2005, I got appointed as teacher in uh, the Department of Education, uh, government of JK. However, it had been always a dream to, uh, you know, uh, so higher education department. Uh, so I just kept the flame alive, kept on working hard, and in 2008, uh, I mean, many doors opened for me. I firstly qualified SET, then GATE, then JRF with NET. So incidentally, I happened to be the first JRF uh, in the electronics from the state, uh, sorry, uh, Valley itself. Then uh, with that particular junior uh, research fellowship from UGC, I joined the Department of Electronics back as UGC junior research fellow. Uh, and started doing my MTEL over there. Uh, it was, I started my MTEL in 2009, Jan. Then uh, I completed the work and submitted my thesis. Uh, my results were yet to come. Uh, in the meantime, I got appointed as assistant professor in the department. Then I had to have my PhD from the Department of Electronics, Kashmir University itself. Of course, so that is the, uh, I mean, uh, brief sort of journey uh, so far as uh, my education is concerned. Thank you, sir, for in helping us understand who you are. So, sir, let us begin since uh, it has been, uh, I believe, consistently, it's, uh, it's twice uh, you have made it to the top uh, researchers in the world and this Stanford University list, which annually issues this. Uh, if you can tell us something about this, what this list is and how they calculate it and what is the impact of this particular list? Yeah, uh, first a little correction. Uh, it's in fact, Alhamdulillah, third time I have made it into the list. Uh, uh, well, see, Dr. Sub, uh, what happens, uh, you uh, are yourself in higher education department. Uh, see, there are many uh, parameters on which your research is somehow uh, quantified. I mean, number of citations being one, then there are many agencies who actually quantify it. Say a Google Scholar is one of the sort of, you know, uh, profiles that profile your, uh, uh, that profiles your research and all that. Then we have uh, ResearchGate. It, it uh, has its own way of computing your citations and many other factors. Uh, and Scopus has its own way. However, so far as uh, this Stanford list is concerned, 
the John I, one of the renowned, uh, who is actually, uh, you know, the researcher who came up with the idea is from the Stanford itself, uh, a medical practitioner to start with, uh, you'll be surprised to know that he, this gentleman has citation score of UOV on, as on today, it's four lakh and some 56,000 citations that gentleman is having. So he somehow with his team tried to come up with a particular sort of, you know, a mechanism by which this can be uh, made more objective. For example, Dr. Sabir from uh, education background, mm -hmm. I am from electronics itself. And one of the most generally used for uh, say this uh, tools to somehow give an indication of a researcher, how he's doing and all that is a Google Scholar, right? Say, for example, if I, I presume that my Google Scholar citation score is 1000 and I say Dr. Sabs is 2000, then uh, the point is how do we, uh, you know, major somehow have an idea about these two different researchers who actually belong to two different subjects, right? I mean, with a, with a research score of 2000, you can, uh, I mean, sorry, citation score of 2000 in education, it could mean a lot compared to, for example, a resource score of 5,000 in sciences, right? So the idea of the team was to quantify it, come up with a metric in such a way, they talk about what's called a C-score, composite score, right? So that is based on many parameters. That is based on many parameters. For example, uh, now, uh, the ambiguity which I was talking about, say, you are from education, I am from electronics, how are, you know, comparative sort of uh, this scheme can be measured, where do I stand? They categorized and subcategorized, you know, uh, the all subjects, there are 22 subcategories into which the researchers have been ranked somehow. Now, so far as the list composition is concerned, so far as C-score is concerned, it depends on many parameters, like, for example, how, uh, what's your, they have taken into consideration, what's your uh, citation score as well. They take it from the scoopers data that's uh, out of the all, you know, indices available is, uh, you know, considered to be the uh, more holier, I would say somehow. Then uh, what's your uh, H index, they somehow settle this H index by seeing, okay, if your H index is say, for example, X, then what is the total number of authors in this particular paper, right? So, and what is your author, what's your author position? Then they also see, okay, uh, how many papers you have written as a single author? What is the number of citations for those papers wherein you are, as, uh, are you know, figuring as single author simultaneously? Okay, and what is the citation score of those papers wherein you are figuring as the corresponding author. So that also matters. These are the various parameters on which a composite score is calculated and that composite score ultimately gives the rise to, okay, what has been your overall, that C score determines what has been uh, your position in your subfield of research in this particular year. That is how they come up with this. And one important point, I would like to tell uh, over here is unfortunately, unfortunately in this part of the world, uh, you know, research somehow this, uh, you know, citing research and citing research of France, somehow it has been an issue uh, that's concerning a lot of researchers around the globe. So they have, uh, in this particular scenario, they come up with two sort of parameters. One is your overall score with your self citations and without your self citation. That gives an idea about why do you stand without your self citations. That's number one. Number two, I was going through his paper wherein they clearly uh, mentioned that, see, uh, in certain team sort of research quartals are formed. For example, a group, a particular group citing work of another particular group, right? So as to increase the citations, they also take care of that and just, you know, uh, their score does not include that sort of thing as well. So uh, overall per se to summarize with, it's a better score that gives more objectivity to, I mean, uh, sort of uh, at least feel for a scientist, okay, why do you actually stand some? Right, sir. So this must be a very tedious task uh, as far as this uh, ranking is concerned. So we are glad that uh, you, uh, I'm sorry, we, you have, you, you are third time making it to the list. And now let's come to, sir, um, another part of the story. 
Now that you are making it to the you know, Alhamdulillah, and we are so glad that you have made it to the third time this year. Now, uh, could you please tell us something about, for example, a person like you who is working in a state university and competing with the best in the world? I mean, of course, this list comes out from the Stanford University, which is, of course, the best university in the world. And uh, I could see there are people in Cambridge and Harvard and in the top ranking when the universities are scholars working in those universities are making the list. Now, my point is, uh, how difficult is for a person like you who is uh, in a way working in a state university, uh, of course, uh, while the funding is not as good as these top universities, uh, how difficult it is for a person like you to make it to this uh, top ranking list? Uh, Doc, so that's a good question. Uh, however, uh, uh, to my understanding, it all depends upon your mental makeup, right? So there are uh, two ways to think. One is, look, I have say 80% of facilities and I do not have 20% and I'll, you know, just uh, keep on, you know, uh, murmuring about it throughout the life. Okay, I could have been there had these 20% been available. And second way is looking at it as an opportunity to collaborate, right? To, you know, research is not something which can be done in uh, standalone mode itself. Having said that, I would like to put in one thing over here that the University of Kashmir is the oldest university of Jammu and Kashmir itself, having established in 1948. Alhamdulillah, we do have a lot of infrastructure at our department. To start with, uh, we have, uh, besides the usual, I mean, uh, funding our department gets, we have been successful in you know, getting grants under FIST, of course, that is a function of your uh, research output that you are generating as a department. Then we have been funded by MIT as well as DST itself. That way we have been able to create the minimal basic infrastructure and about that, I would say that's required. Uh, in addition, uh, definitely there are some improvements are needed over there, but uh, Alhamdulillah, I could uh, make some good collaborations with uh, in uh, with uh, people from some good universities at Europe. Then in uh, from Korea, I have a couple of collaborators who are top notch in the subject itself. So that somehow really helped a bit. If I was lagging something, I mean a bit here and a bit there, that really helped. And uh, I mean uh, you know once you come you know talk about research and you talk about uh, producing a research output that's comparable uh, to any sort of your, uh, you know, any sort of work that's coming from your peer groups, uh, you need to collaborate. Collaboration is the name of the day. And simultaneously, it's, it has really become easy because of technology as well. Now world has changed into the global place. So provided you do your, you do good work, definitely you have to start with something you have to come up with something very concrete, then your peers would notice it somehow, you know, how things go. And once you are able to convince some peer groups, no, see, I'm doing some very good work, then definitely collaborations are all, always on and they do help, they do help. You know. So let us go to some, uh, one more question, sir. Usually in this part of the country, we, we see that we are not in a way uh, making sort of quality research is not being conducted. Usually we could see scholars not able to make an impact. Uh, uh, as for you, since you have been in the system for almost a decade and you have been yourself a good researcher, what are those hiccups? What are those initial hiccups, uh, which are in a way, uh, which come in way between uh, doing a good research uh, and how could, how could those hiccups be in a way, uh, I mean, get rid of? Yeah, yeah, I, I got your question. Part of it, I guess I have answered uh, in the earlier query wherein I talk about it's your mindset. It's your mindset, how you look at the things. That's number one. And number two is uh, straight away, I mean, uh, <clears throat> once you talk about the other aspect of the things, see, research is something you, it, to my understanding, I have sort of, uh, I have understood it that way, that it of course varies from subject to subject. Once I talk about research more generally, I'm talking about electronics and that may be true for computer sciences and allied subjects somehow as well. Uh, it's, uh, it has no shortcuts. I mean, you start researching, then there is again pressure from peer research scholars. You are another guy comes up with a paper, then you somehow start trembling and trying to produce a, 
you know, uh, raw results and trying to push it through somehow. I mean, uh, no shortcuts. You need to have lots of perseverance. Uh, I could say, I mean, uh, for a cup, you are researching on a problem. It could be that for a couple of years, you're getting nothing. So you need not that tough time is where you have to, you know, wait and really not compromise with the principles. And I guess perhaps that is the dedication is something we need to have, you know, uh, have a better look at. Good, sir. So let us come to the, at the conclusion of this uh, conversation, sir. Uh, could you please have some message for, for the youth in general and scholars in particular? Yeah, sure. Uh, see, a general message, of course, to start with the uh, youth is there are no substitute to, the, to hard work. Have goal, focus on your goal, right? And definitely, if you work hard, uh, you, you would achieve it. So far as scholars is concerned, uh, see, uh, I have been for, I would take a minute on that. I have been fortunate, you know, somehow fortunate enough to be guided by the legendary professor GM Bhatt, who was, uh, who had a different take on this, I mean, uh, this research scenario. So I would, so doing research, coming up, cre creating new knowledge, new concepts is good, right? But simultaneously, we need to have an eye on uh, while you are doing research and uh, maybe for students itself, wheresoever they are, in which class they are, we need to be more innovative. I mean, we have to think of innovations as well, right? See, I was I would just try to give you a brief statistics. Uh, why do we lie? We have to do research that's now, that has to be product-based. Uh, somehow because that caters to many of our problems that would generate more employment uh, and that would uh, somehow uh, more investments would come to your place somehow see i was talking about some figures the figures are like i was going through uh, the number of patents that are actually that have been filed uh, but that have been filed worldwide as per WIPO data in 2020, right? Uh, China is the topmost country that has actually filed uh, one, one lakh, sorry, 15 lakh patent applications have been filed over the year compared to China. In India, only 55,000 patents have been, you know, filed. And you know, uh, what, what, what is the situation in Kashmir? only 40 patents have been filed in Kashmir in that particular sort of, you know, stuff. That means it's, I guess, uh, this is the area where in perhaps scholars, besides creating the knowledge, how to have an eye into, uh, and it's not only, I mean, uh, it's not only science kn knowing people who have to come into that, it's responsibility of every teacher. It's not necessary that a teacher should have 10 patents, then he'll be talking about patents. Our responsibility is to sensitize people at every stage, sensitize students at every stage, what technology can uh, get in for us, how we can actually you know, solve our problems. And of course, uh, the day-to-day -day problems on the smaller scale and on a bigger scale, the economic problems that the overall you know, uh, country is facing. So, sir, no, first of all, thank you for taking time and talking to us. Uh, I believe uh, that this message will go down to the youths of Kashmir and especially to the country. And uh, people like you, in a way, inspire us. Uh, they make us think, rethink, and make us that it, it helps us to understand and work hard. So I am very thankful to you, sir, taking, for taking time and talking to us. Uh, we, we wish you all the best for your future endeavors. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you, sir. My pleasure. Thank you for having me. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir.